I have just a couple of announcements for you. Uh, make sure you read your announcement page. That's my first announcement. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in there that is important. Uh, look especially under ways to serve. Uh, there's help needed for a vacation Bible school through Camp Restore, and that would be happening at East Bethlehem. Uh, they do need help. Please take a look at how you might be able to help. Use the email address. That does begin tomorrow if I remember the announcement correctly, so please do that. Also, still in the, on the back white table are the nomination forms for the pa new pastor. Uh, please take a look in that. If you have somebody you would be interested uh, in, in us considering, this is the way to go. Do not tell me a name because I will tell you to fill this out. Okay? It's the way the system works. Uh, so please, just to do that. And then this week, those will be delivered to our district office in Ann Arbor. Um, Remember, Sunday school and Bible study as well. That's an important thing for us to, to keep focused on. Uh, let's not lose our sights of hearing God's word even during the summer. That way we can grow in faith and love and the image of Christ can be formed in us. The final thing is we have communion. And with only one pastor, we're going to go back to a continuous line type of thing. Okay? Uh, I'll be in the center and we'll have elder and elder assistant on each side. And so you'll come down the center, and I'll commune, and I'll commune, and then you just go to the side and just go back around and back to your seats. What that means, though, for you all on these edges is I still need you to come down the center. Okay, so come up, come down the center, and then back to your seats. So, Karen, you're looking at me like you got to be kidding. Yes, Karen, you got to walk. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah, come all the way back and around, and that's how we'll handle that. Okay? Make sense? So follow the first ones if they do it right. If they don't, ignore them, okay? Uh, wait, give a wave to one another and wish each other blessings.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We take a moment to kneel and meditate on our sin and God's love in Christ. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. O Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes, the first and the second chapters. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool, yet he will be a master of all for which I have toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person that, than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For this too is the one, for to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he is given the business of gathering and collecting, only to give it to one who pleases God. This also is vanity and a striving after the wind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from Colossians chapter 3. St. Paul writes, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked while you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger and wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. We read together. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, 
Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. We thank you, Father, that you gather us together at the beginning of this day, that our day may be made holy by your word and our meditation on it. We pray now that you would indeed let us get lost for a moment in the words you have to give, that by your grace we may grow up into the image of Jesus for your glory, for the good of this world. We pray this in his name. Amen. You may be seated. People like to say things like, well, I just got lost in my thoughts. We all lose ourselves sometimes, don't we? We lose ourselves in our thoughts, or maybe it's in your hobbies. Maybe it's in your family, where it grabs our attention and just forces us to think about these things and nothing else. We lose ourselves. That's what we say. Maybe it is time for us to lose ourselves. And maybe it's time for us, well, to find real life. For what our readings are so clear about today, it's not by pursuing the things of this life that we find real life and we get, find the benefits we're looking it's not in, in the pursuit of, of all those good things that God is giving, but it's rather in Christ. That when we find ourselves hidden in Jesus, that's when we know we have the good things. In the Old Testament, King Solomon, who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, is trying to demonstrate what life is like apart from faith. He tries to explain that. And he does it by looking at all the different things, and he talks about examining folly and riches and, and, and poverty even, and all these things he has looked at and studied, and what he has found is even all the hard work we put into this life finally ends up somewhat meaningless because someone else comes along and gets it. And he calls it a vanity. In the old you know, uh, translations, it, it, it talks about it being mist-like, like it's an illusion. It's a chasing after wind. You know how a dog does that? A puppy, the first time they have wind hit their faces, they start snapping at it, trying to grab whatever's touching them. That is the, the way people are who, who get lost in their work, who get lost in the pursuit of, of the next thing that they need to find peace and contentment and happiness. And he says, this is all vanity. It's all misty. And Jesus explains the same thing. He talks, has a man come up to him and says, teacher, tell my brother to split the inheritance with me. He's hoarding it all. And he knows he's supposed to give me a third. Why won't he do it, master? You make him do it. And Jesus essentially tells him, drop it. He tells the parable that we know as the rich fool. A man who got it richly and abundantly blessed. He had so much grain coming in, he couldn't have store it. So he built new barns. And then he sat back and he said, oh, I have done it all. My life is easy. Now I can retire and not think about a thing. And that night God says to him, fool. See, the problem's not the gathering. But that's what he found contentment in. That's what he found peace in. That's what he thought he was set for life, not knowing that night his life was done. See, it was all done apart from faith, apart from looking to Jesus. And that's where we get finally to Paul. For what Paul reminds us is that there is no greater reality than Jesus. There's no greater truth than that we have forgiveness of sins and salvation in him. And that if you want real life, it's found in Jesus. Now the problem is, sometimes the stuff of this life seems more real, doesn't it? I mean, we can touch a car, we can look at our home, we can be proud of our children most days. 
We can do those things and they seem more real. But to focus on Jesus, on a man who's not here, and with our sin, while it may not be good, it's not as bad as some of those other people we know about, it doesn't seem as real and as true. But it is. You see, earlier in Colossians, in a reading from last week, Paul talks about new moons and Sabbaths and all those things are merely a shadow of the Jesus who is coming. They were there saying, in this shadow, the reality's approaching. It's getting nearer. And so often what we do is we take shadowy things of this life and we substitute them for the truth. We take things, well, again, like money and work and education and wisdom and knowledge and success on the sporting field and all of those things and we look at them and say, now I know I'm blessed by God. But that's not the way to see things. Because they may occur, but God takes care of his own. And we could end up like that rich fool. Fool, tonight your soul is required of you. And what Paul does is so simple. He says simply this, right? If then you have been raised with Christ... If you have faith in him and you've been baptized and brought into Christ, if you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that really matter. Focus on the things that are lasting. See, Paul tells in in, in the book of Colossians that baptism gives us a new reality. It gives us the greatest reality. It gives us the truth. It brings us into God and to Jesus. We are united with him. We might get lost in our work and in our hobbies, our thoughts, and the world that we live. But finally he says, no, if you are a child of God, your life is hidden in Jesus. It is hidden with him. And in him we find the things that really matter. We find our forgiveness of sins. We find new life. We find life eternal. That is what matters. We lose ourselves. It's like Jesus says elsewhere, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. Let him be like me. Let him find me. Let him live in me. Be lost in Jesus. And that means our self is not defined the way our world teaches us. We don't have to self-identify. We don't have to look around for what is truth and what is meaning. We have lost ourselves in Jesus. And even though we may not sound or look like the world in the way we speak, here is the truth. We have gained way more than we could ever lose by dying to ourselves. For we died to sin with Christ. We have died to put away those evil things, and we rise again to new life. Now, obviously, that's pointing to that last window, right? The marriage feast in heaven. It's obviously pointing us to that. But you know what? That's yet to come, isn't it? But yet, even today, you and I have this gift that we are hidden in Christ and we have risen to a new life. That's what Paul talks about. What he says, if you have died and your life is hidden with God in Christ, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So therefore, put to death what is earthly in you. We have something far greater than this. So put to death sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, even covetousness. That's what drives our world, isn't it? Covetousness. The desire for more and more and more. But also put away anger and wrath and malice and slander and obscene talk. Don't lie to one another any longer. Seek that you put off your old self with its practices. See, that is what we lose, and that's a good thing. 
Our world is broken and it's dysfunctional simply because of sin. And too often we are a part of that. And he tells us to die with that, to die with those worldly things. And then he continues, and clothe yourselves with the new man. A whole new person is built, and that person is built in Jesus. It's not the way of the world, and yes, your kids will look strange if you act like a child of God, and you parents, yes, you will look odd if you actually tell your kids no, they can't do everything their friends do. And yes, as you get older, as you say, retirement sounds great, but how am I going to serve God? They're going to say, don't do anything. That's what the world says. But our Jesus puts himself on. You see, what we put on is Christ. We're being remade into the image of our God, our Creator, so that we look like Him and live like Him in this world. It's going back to the garden to be like Adam and Eve before the fall, where we do nothing but love and serve and care for our world and each other. That is what Jesus did, isn't he? He didn't simply wasn't mean to that man and say, give them his inheritance. And well, How can you worry about that stuff? No, Jesus redirected them. He wanted them to keep his priorities straight. You see, we do that because Christ is at work in us. We are hidden in Jesus. We are being remade in the image of God. So when the world looks at us, it should not see a carbon copy of the world. It should not even see a Christianized copy of this world. What it should see is Jesus with love and forgiveness. You see, the, our reading cuts off at verse 11, and it kind of aggravates me. Because as Paul ends saying, put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of, after the image of its creator, in verse 12 it continues. Put on then, as God's chosen, holy, and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing one with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. You see, that's what we look like in our world. We not only have put away anger, but now we put on compassion, and we put on forgiveness. And I love the words, bear with one another. That's not the way you and I talk, is it? I put up with other people. That's bearing. See, we get lost in Jesus. Our lives now are different. And where we see that they're not, well, we do what we've already done this morning, right? We kneel before our God and ask Him for forgiveness. For that's the renewal is to hear that word again and again and again. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. My friends, I know we hear this message time and time again, but it is so important. I want you to lose yourselves. I want you to lose yourselves, not chasing the wind and the stuff of this world, no matter how important it is. Yes, we still work because that's the task God gave even Adam in the garden. But we remember that all good gifts come from our God. And what we strive for in this life is not lasting unless it's Christ. For there is real life and it is found in Jesus. And in Jesus, the old self dies and a new one arises in compassion. And forgiveness and what happens is the world begins to see a very the very picture of Jesus rising and living in us so my friends lose yourselves in Christ and will be finding yourself much more content much more happy and find yourself a child of God amen and now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. Please rise as we confess our faith. And we confess 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and may he rose again and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that in Jesus you have given to us true life. And we pray that by your mercies we would find joy and blessing in this always. Grant in us to die to the things of this world and the world that clings to us, that we may live in Christ and show forth his compassion and his mercy and his care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of Christian fellowship. We thank you for the families that you have gathered here together at St. John, and pray that by your mercies we would grow together in faith and love. We pray that you would be with Jack Cartrell, the Mike Cartrell family, Marilyn Gerhardt, the Peter Gnord family, and the Bob Georgievic family. Grant that they might receive your word with joy and thanksgiving. We pray, Heavenly Father, that by your goodness, you would bless those with mercy who are being persecuted, that though they suffer for the name of Christ, may they stand steadfast and so receive the crown of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the mission of this congregation that by your goodness you would indeed bless our preaching and our teaching through our church and our school. Bless the VBS that was here the past week, that the words may take deep root in the life of those children and within their homes. We pray for Lutheran Hour Ministries, the mission of the month, that their work they do here in the United States and throughout the world may be blessed, that many may be strengthened in the faith and come to faith through their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, there are so many who need to hear your word. We pray that you would indeed raise up pastors uh, that they might preach your word in season and out of season, always ready so that those who do not know your love may learn of it and those who are your children may be strengthened. We pray that you would prepare a new pastor for us here at St. John, that he may join in the ministry here and we may receive the blessings of his words and his speech that are in accordance with the true confession. We pray as well for Pastor Elliot as he is installed today at Messiah in Seattle. Grant to his, he and his family peace and blessings throughout the time they spend there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this life. We thank you for the 27 years you have given to, get to Tracy and Rhonda and we pray that by your goodness they can enjoy many more and show forth your care and your mercies. We pray as well, Heavenly Father, a prayer of thanksgiving for Alexis, who celebrated her birthday this week. Grant to her uh, much joy in, in living in your goodness and mercy, grace, and that by your care she may always know your love in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. 
We thank you, too, that Gloria has been with us for 50 years at St. John, and we pray that you would bless her with many more as together we grow in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for peace in our nation, that you would grant harmony where there is disharmony, repentance where wrong has been done, and forgiveness where those who have been wronged might bridge that gap. We pray for our president and our vice president and all those who are in positions to make and enforce and enact our laws, that by your goodness they might be ruled by righteousness and justice. We pray as well that you would watch over uh, those who by your care are serving throughout our world to bring protection and peace. Be with all those who are serving in the armed forces. Grant to those who are deployed safe return to their homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are hospitalized, especially for Tom Van Hooley, for Donna and Dana, who are now at home recovering. We pray that they would know your mercy and the healing that comes from your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the city of Detroit and those of us in our suburbs, that there might be jobs for those who need them, and there might be qualified employees for those who are seeking to hire. Most of all, we pray that your word would go out powerfully and that this region would be marked more by faith than by anything else. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we worship the Lord with our offerings.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. pray. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had to mercy in those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>